I'm super excited about this because I can't wait to see Rhoda paint some of the live attendees. Um, so just a little bit about Rhoda. You guys probably learned a little bit from our promotions, but she is most definitely a multi-talented artist, and she can paint anywhere at any time. As a matter of fact, right now she is in a cafe in Mexico. Um, so who knows? Maybe people will be looking over her shoulder. And her skill set is its huge. So she uses multiple mediums. It's not just digital. She does do traditional painting as well, and she has a wide variety of styles. Today, we're going to focus on caricature, but feel free to go to her website. You can learn about, um, she does have, she does training, she paints personal caricatures, and she does live events. So if you or the company that you're working for is looking for something like that, I definitely recommend Rhoda. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Rhoda to get started. Thank you, Tanya. That was a beautiful introduction. I can't say much more than uh, than what you said already, um, except to uh, tell you, I've been using Painter uh, since it was born. Uh, that's way back in the 90s, uh, possibly before some of you were born. Uh, in any case, I have uh, written books on Painter. Here are a few of them. And I have also uh, created some uh, video tutorials on how to use uh, Painter uh, creatively. Uh, let me show you that, I won't save that. Also that I have been doing live events, uh, doing caricatures with Painter uh, again since the 90s. I was a caricature artist way before that, but uh, Painter, when Painter came on the scene, I was in the right place at the right time and I jumped on it. So let me once again show you some of my uh, uh, live work. These were all done at events of some sort in probably in five minutes or less. And the photos are simply uh, to show you what um, uh, what my likeness is uh, uh, so I could use it for, for promotional purposes. I worked uh, from this uh, from live rather than from photos. So let's uh, look at some more of these. And I won't save that. Here's here's another one. I'd like to uh, to show that uh, when you're doing caricature, what you're doing is you're simplifying and exaggerating. I mean, within that comes uh, a wide variety of uh, of choices to be made. In this particular case, I went for the nose, and I also made up. Uh, since this was a woman uh, clearly of Indian descent, I made up that little bindi uh, red spot up there. So I get to to be creative in that way let's make that go away and here's another uh, fellow from uh, originally from India or his people were from India and, and I was at some sort of event where IBM had hired me to draw caricatures of people they often wanted me to keep um, the folks at the booth uh, occupied so that they could sell whatever it was they were selling. Here's uh, Senior Lopez at a family uh, reunion event, and I took the liberty of giving him a very large, uh, a scruffy neck. Let's see a couple more of these. Here's another one. And I'll just kind of go through more of these as I go. When I see a, a glamorous woman, I kind of like to exaggerate that aspect of it. As you can as you can see, and you can start to see some of the tools I'm using. I'm using a, um, a a brush variant called dry ink for the outline, and I'm using a um, a scratch board rake tool or brush variant with uh, some color variability within it. I'll show you more about that as we go. Here's a fellow who was at uh, an event, and I exaggerated uh, and simplified that face. Let's see if I have a couple more. I also, here's another one. I also want to show you some of the work I do in the studio from photos where I've been commissioned to create something either for publication or just for uh, personal use. It could be a logo or it could be um, 
any number of of, uh, of uses that people would would want to have a caricature. So here's another uh, woman of Indian descent. Um, I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area for for many years, and I had the uh, opportunity of seeing people from a wide variety of ethnic backgrounds. Uh, of San Francisco being such a wonderful cosmopolitan uh, city, and also these t these tech events, these tech conventions were. Um, attended by people from all over the world. So I got to see uh, a tremendous array of, uh, of facial and uh, features and ethnic types. So let's make that go away. Here's an example of a studio piece that I did from photos for this uh, family. And here, I'm not concerned about speed so much. I'll, I'll be demonstrating my, my speed caricature uh, uh, in a moment. Uh, but I just want you to see what I do when I'm uh, just concerned about uh, more accuracy. So I'm using a, a a smoother kind of an ink pen here. I'm using the scratch board pen, which I'll just show you right now. This is a, uh, a template. And if I'm using, let me go to uh, actual size here. If I'm using the scratch board tool with black, this is the kind of line I get. Well, yeah, okay, I want to use black, actually. So here's a line that I get with the scratch board tool, and it does have a thick and thin quality to it based on pressure, of course. I'm using a, a Wacom tablet along with my MacBook Pro. Now, just to show you that in contrast what the, the dry ink uh, uh, brush variant looks like, that's the one I use with my live work. This is, whoa, that is a... It's also thick and thin, but it has a very juicy, bristly kind of uh, of a of a, a a profile or or a, a quality to it. I'm just gonna do a select all and delete all those strokes. So one or two more of the of my studio pieces. Let's make that one go away and let me show you. Let's see. Oh, well, this was one of the live ones, but we'll just make that one go away. And so here's another uh, studio piece. I think it was used in the promo for this uh, webinar. This was, again, a, a family uh, who provided me with some photos, uh, including the dog, and an idea. And I gave them a rough uh, sketch, also done with a scratch board tool in Painter. And let's just zoom zoom in a little bit and so after uh, one or two rounds I was able to uh, to get their approval for the final art and uh, I can just show you this is still in layers that that uh, that's the color layer I'm just turning off the color layer although it looks like the seahorse had its own uh, layer here I'll bring color back and then this was uh, yeah that's the seahorse layer and now just the line work which was uh, done with the scratch board tool, as I uh, mentioned. So let me make that one go away without saving it. And uh, here's a piece that I did for publication. It is a uh, caricature of some sports figures that was used on uh, as cover art for a, uh, a sports video. Let's make that one go away. And uh, finally, here uh, is something I did as cover art for um, a magazine, an editorial magazine on uh, medical issues. And so this is like a comic strip having to do with uh, smoking issues. So we have, uh, we have these characters saying things like, smoking relaxes me. How can I tell Bob about his breath? So there's a humorous quality there, but it's also um, got a message about uh, the, the perils of smoking. Let's uh, make that one go away. And finally, as another example of a, uh, a personal um, commission, this was for the wedding invitation for this couple who was having their wedding in Hawaii. So we have uh, we have some under underwater characters. All I got from them was uh, photos of their face, and then I was able to come up with uh, concepts until they approved of what we had. So let me actually get now to how I set up for live work. And the first thing I'll show you is my my template which has, let me have a, go up to window, I'll do, go zoom to fit, which is almost the, um, 
the exact, uh, almost actual size, 95 and change. Um, on my template, I have a line layer. That's where I'm going to be making lines with the with the scratch board tool. I'm sorry, with the dry ink tool. And before I go any further, I want to go to my preferences and do a a brush tracking, a fresh brush tracking. That is simply a way that you can tell painter what your speed and pressure is at the moment or for a given project. And now that should uh, that should accommodate to the way you work. If you have a very light touch, you'll get a different kind of an effect. I'm looking for a little bit more control here. So that's going to work out. Okay. I also have a color layer. So uh, let's say I do a line and get my, my features here on the line layer. Oh, that looks just like them. I can go to color and my color layer is already in gel mode. It's one of the choices that you have in the uh, in the blending modes um, uh, array, and so that means if I go in there now with a with a flesh tone or whatever it might be, I can still see the line layer. If that was default, the uh, I, that would be opaque, and so I would not be able to see what's underneath it. So let me go back then to gel, and let me just uh, get rid of all of those lines. Uh, I have a layout that I have customized for working live so that I can uh, just hit the ground running more or less. And the layout is something I have saved using this um, command in the window menu, uh, save layout. And I've called it, uh, let's go back to layout. I've called it caricature 2020. So anytime I switch to a different layout or go back to default layout, I can always find this particular array. So this is showing me the uh, a reference reference image panel. I'll show you how that's used. It shows me my my color set, which again I have a custom color set that I've called caricature colors. So I don't have to go through a huge number of colors in order to find the, in this case, what, 25 or so colors that are likely to be more useful to me when I'm doing the caricature work. Everything is designed for speed and efficiency. I don't have time to look through the thousands of brush variants to find just the one I want. I have them all set up here in a custom palette. So here's how to make a custom palette. Dry ink, as you see, is in here already. If I wanted to uh, add something to this custom palette or just start a new custom palette, why don't I do that? I'll move this one over. It's as simple as holding your shift key down and then dragging out, and there you have the beginning of a custom palette. It's, uh, it's called Custom 5 at the moment, and if I wanted to add another item uh, to it, maybe, all right, maybe I want to, uh, uh, my scratch board tool in there. I just clicked on the uh, or tapped on the scratch board tool in my 2020 caricature uh, palette. And so now again, I'm holding my shift key down and I'm dragging over to this new custom palette. If I want to move things around, all I need is to use my shift key. And somehow that didn't get there. So let me try that again. And there it is. Now, if I want to organize or rename or do something, I'll go to the custom palette organizer that's right here. And I see that it's showing me the 2020 caricature demo palette, which is what I'm going to work with. And also this one that I just made, which I don't want to keep. So I'll just go click on it and click delete. And I will be done with that. So it's as simple as that. You can also add commands to a custom palette. And I think it would be nice to have zoom in and zoom out as commands in my custom palette. So I'll go back to custom palette organizer or, or custom palette uh, menu and use add command. Now I want it to be added to this particular palette. So I'll choose that. And I want to select the command from Let's see, where do I want to go? I want to make a, a zoom. I want to do a zoom in. So now it's showing me, well, I got zoom out. Well, it, both of them would be good. Zoom out. Yeah, zoom out. There we go. So I'm adding that. Look at that. It just popped into my custom palette. Let's add zoom in as well. 
So I'll click OK, first of all, and then I'll go back to uh, Custom Palette, Add Command, and let's add to this particular 2020 Custom Palette, let's add uh, Zoom Out. Is that the one I want? No, I want Zoom In. Ah, let's try that again. <laughs> let's go to Zoom In. All righty. Now showing me zoom in, and so I will click OK. And now there it is. I've got uh, zoom in, zoom out, and this one iterative save that I added before. That is extremely handy if you want to save stages in uh, a piece, um, any artwork at all, without having to go to save as and you know type in a, a unique name, that type of thing. Again for efficiency and speed. There's nothing like uh, iterative uh, save. Well, let's go and do a, a sample using a reference image. I think I'll go to a, uh, I'll open a reference image that will enable me to go to um, my Let's see. Let's see. All right. I'm going to use myself as a as a sample to show that uh, I can take it as well as dish it out. And with this dry ink variant on my line layer, I'm just going to go in there whoop, with black. Let's switch to black. We we'll go in there and make that make that cap. I, I usually start at the top and work down, and show the glasses and. Oop, that's a little too thick. Let's go in there and the ear. And I'm going to exaggerate, not that much, exaggerate that nose. Maybe have a little bit of a tilt. Exaggerate the tilt or the angle of all of those uh, features so I can do this. Then big earring. I quite like my earrings. And so there's one. We'll give a turtleneck over here and uh, the other side of the uh, the glasses, maybe give myself uh, more information on the nose and some hair. Let's get some hair in there. And I believe I'm going to do a save. Let's start with that iterative save. And so it's now going to actually call that uh, template. I didn't give it a unique name. So it's template 4 by 6 one And that'll uh, just keep on. Uh, uh, adding adding to that. So let's now go to the color layer and put in some some flesh tone and I can get sloppy with that and maybe a little bit lighter with that. I'll undo undo that last one there. Oh, I, I wanted to zoom in with my, yeah, that's good. That's looking good. I can go in there with a with a skin tone on the, uh, on the color layer. Yeah, is there a question, Tanya? Or? Yeah. Um, Jeremy was wondering, and he asked this early on when you first showed the layers, but yeah. is there a reason that, um, what's the thought process behind the color layer being gel and above your line layer? Okay, happy to answer that question. Um, I don't know that it matters whether the color layer is above or below line, in fact, Here's what I just did is I put line and color, I switched line and color, so it doesn't matter. But the purpose of of the uh, having gel for the uh, for the color layer is so so that it's transparent, so you can see the line layer through it, and that's uh, that's pretty important. So, uh, is there any other question I need to answer at the moment? Um, well, Joseph is wondering what size of paper are you using right now, and I guess that kind of leads into, is there a certain document size that you typically use? Okay, uh, that's an easy one, because I typically, when I'm working live, I, I'm preparing uh, a, uh, that was a little bit too too wide there. Uh, I work with a, with a four by six uh, photo printer, and so the template is therefore a, uh, a four by six. Uh, template four by six. I just clicked on tab so that you could see the the title bar there, and uh, and that's going to end up being. I'm not I'm not sure exactly what the what the resolution is, but let me go and take a look at that. If I uh, do Command Shift and R, I can see 
four by six at 125 uh, pixels per inch, which is a, a relatively low resolution. But for this kind of work, it's fine. It would it would be um, not sufficient if I was working with uh, with photo imagery. But uh, for this, uh, I find that my four by six prints uh, turn out nice and crisp and uh, no pixelation at all. Uh, if there are any more questions, uh, go ahead. Meanwhile, I'll just kind of clean this up. I want to go to my color layer once again. And using the the um, my option or alt key, I, I switched to white so that I could just go in there and basically erase all the white that's slopping over the edges of my uh, of my line work. So I'm going to keep on keeping on over here. I'm going to use maybe this color and switch to the chunky oil pastel for for the glasses and switch again to white just to create you know kind of a shiny bit there and also to to uh clean up some of the edges once again um i'm going to i'm going to get a, a a stronger purple than what i have in my uh caricature colors so i'll 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 choose that and then I'll look at the at the entire uh, color wheel here, so that I can get the kind of purple that I'd kind of like to see. So now with that purple, and maybe I'll add that purple to my. Uh, there it is. Look at that nice magenta. So I can go in and and oh yeah, put that in for the for the earring. Now I think I'm gonna just add, maybe put that in for the cap for the uh, the bill of the cap. And now I'm going to switch to the, uh, oh, let's clean those teeth off. Let's give me some white teeth over there and give me some more skin uh, tone, maybe a um, a little bit of a rosy glow to my cheeks. And I'm still using chunky oil pastel. So let's uh, let's do some of that. That's, that's, that's just way too heavy. Let me put that on the lips uh, also. But now I, I have a blender tool in my collection here I should have if I don't I'm going to add one uh, let's go to the blenders and find a blender that I like so let's see a blender like grainy water grainy water should do the trick let's see how that goes yeah that's kind of a, a good basic blender and that gives me a nice uh, blended out uh, cheek tone and I'll add that to my um, custom palette so I'll hold my shift key down and drag grainy water down and do I have it let's see maybe it's further out here there it is but I'd like to move it over to another spot so that's good I also have two paper textures in my custom palette and that's kind of handy I have a uh, basic paper notice when you hover over any of these um, items, you'll see the name of, uh, to tell you what you're what you're dealing with. Fine dots is something I use uh, to create a, a, a grid pattern or uh, something like five o'clock shadow. So let me go back now and uh, switch to my scratch board rake. And this scratch board rake, let me just show you by making a few strokes. Uh, Do you have okay. a couple questions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think it's pronounced Lorian, and I'm sorry if I pronounce that wrong, but um, they're wondering if you're going to release a new painter book. <laughs> uh, what are they asking? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, a new painter book. So you pulled out, you oh. had on the, at the ah, beginning of the session. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, uh, there's nothing in the works uh, right now, but, uh, you know, talk to my agent. <laughs> Just kidding. I okay. don't have an agent. So um, we can talk about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. Okay. Okay. And I'm a, uh, um, Joseph was wondering how you got your, how did you come up with your caricature colors? Is that just something you've been working with for years? Um, yeah. Uh, like I might do, for example, if I have a uh, an image that I feel has the full array of of colors that I typically need, I might just go over to my color set menu and create new color set from that image. You see, so maybe I could choose. A, I'll do that right now. New color set from image, and call that call that a, a demo color set or demo 
caricature, something like that. That whatever you want to name it. And I misspelled it here, so let's get rid of that. And so now I'll click OK, and that should appear just below the. And here we go, demo caricature. So that has um, quite an array of skin tones, for example, which I had, be, you know, partly because I did that smearing with the with their Blender tool. Uh, we're seeing uh, uh, quite a lot of pinks and flesh tones and whatnot, plus that uh, that nice magenta I just made, the red, a stronger, the pink from the lips and so on, and then uh, black for the line work. And so so it, it's as easy as that to create a new color, color set from your image. And so the one that I that I already had has a few extras here because there's no yellow in this particular image, uh, but but there is a yellow and an orange and some other things here in uh, uh, in the color set that I had uh, before. Let's uh, let's see if I can uh, put in some uh, some more uh, refinements here, such as let me go to uh, some effects here. There might be some effects. A marbling rake. What's that going to do for me on my color? No, nope, I don't think so. Uh, but ah, but let's that be in. Uh, well, here's a way to get some texture. That's that's kind of what I wanted to do was get some texture. I'm going to use fog jitter and uh, with my um, option or alt key get this magenta color and now I'm going to put some fog jitter in there, some fog jitter in the earring just so I can get some texture and now I'll go back to my scratch board tool with white and clean up some of that. So this is a very uh, interesting lesson on, uh, I'm using the skin tone to clean up this part, interesting lesson on, on improvising and, and handling unexpected um, uh, things which may from time to time occur. It's also a lesson on how deep and complex this program is. So you can spend a lifetime, uh, and I've almost done that, uh, just you know, kind of learning and and learning uh, to go deeper into the uh, the program and developing uh, more skill as you go. So it's it's pretty exciting if you can avoid uh, being you know, uh, uh, being overwhelmed by all the choices. I did, uh, in, in my classroom teaching, I had a student just kind of, you know, basically throw her hands up and say, there's just too many choices here. And so you need to, to uh, well, one way to, that you're limiting your choices, of course, is to simply have all of these customized uh, things that you can go to without having to, um, uh, to reinvent the wheel or to, you know, go and, and uh, let me get that rake. This time my rake is just going to be giving me plain old gray strokes, but that's uh, okay. That'll give me the gray hair that I have so richly deserved. And uh, we're just about there. I'm just going to clean up the lips here. And whoop, I want to get the red for that. And so when I use my scratch board tool, I am uh, I'm able to get some some nice detail, but the um, the tool that gives me the rich juicy um, uh, effect is the uh, is the dry ink. So let me uh, put a little bit of dry ink over, or let me use sorry the the scratch board tool with a little little bit of a a darker gray just to create some some variability, even though the variability is not from within the uh, the stroke. So I'm going to call it. I'm going to say that's probably close enough. And uh, I didn't use iterative save enough, so I'll do another iterative save. And then if I wanted to to keep going, I could uh, I could do that. Um, let me dismiss this then and uh, open up one of the um, uh, photos that have been submitted for uh, for the next uh, part of the demo. And I'll go and open up. Uh, David, there we go. Look at that. I'm looking at David. What a, what an amazing smile. And I'm gonna just open my template again. I might have to actually uh, take that template back to its original. Let me go over here. And template is under. The nice thing about the uh, the reference image is that it's always on top of everything. You don't have to go finding it. And it's uh, the template. Looks like my template is still in good shape. Let me zoom to fit and at this point I will go and use my black 
I'll go to the layers. Let's find my layers once again. It should be over there. Okay, so I start on the line layer. And with my dry ink, let me just get the, the basic. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do another another brush tracking. I think I might be able to get a better uh effect when I do that. So here's yeah, that's good. So here's the hair, kind of sorta. There's an ear. I like to do as much as I can with a single stroke. Let me zoom in actually for the actual size. And I'm gonna exaggerate the the shape and the angles of this face. Look at that. So now I'm gonna put in an eye and a nose. <laughs> he's already making faces for me, so I'll give him this wonderful smile that he's got. And I, I won't make a, a line for every tooth. I like to say, uh, I like to warn people not to do piano keys teeth, which is what I call it when you do a line for every individual tooth. Uh, so let's get that other eye in there. And here we go. And the cheek, this is the uh, the cheek. And I think we're ready just about for, I'm gonna zoom in with my little um, custom command, command on my custom palette. And let's go to, let's go to the color uh, section. So we'll go to the color layer, I should say, zoom out there we go and i'll put in a basic uh, skin tone here using i think i'll use my chunky oil pastel for that and oh i have to ha i'm on the line layer wrong layer look at that you always want to check that if i'm on my color layer which is in gel mode uh sure enough it is uh, going to allow me to show the uh, the line through and i'll go back to my uh my dry ink and and so I can really fill that in very quickly. I'll try to avoid the teeth so I don't have to erase all that stuff. And, and we're good. So far we're pretty good. Let me get a, a, a good basic uh, hair color uh, for this guy. And I think maybe I'll choose a, a, a duller brown. There, That's a pretty good looking brown we have there. And I'm gonna zoom in like so, and just by holding down my shift key, I can get the grabber hand so I can move things around to where I want uh, to be. Uh, just for the tiny areas that I wanna clean up, I'll use the scratch board tool to get a, uh, a white, so we can erase that and erase that. Let's give him some, some cheek color, so I'll choose a pink. Now I'll go to the chunky oil pastel and give him a pink cheek. And how about a little pink on the nose, the other cheek, and maybe that lower lip a little bit. This is gonna be handy for me to use my, uh, my fine dots paper texture because I want to give him, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this guy, uh, even if it's not there, or even if I have to make it up, I quite like giving uh, uh, guys a, uh, a, a layer of uh, five o'clock shadow. So I'm gonna do that with um, with the chunky oil. Let's see if I can get that, use that with a, a kind of a gray. Now that's a little too dull. I wanna go in there maybe with this, uh, I'll choose another color, kind of like a greenish gray. And I'm gonna choose a different, uh, a stronger uh, texture that I can get from from chalk, so look at that. <laughs> I can really make that happen very quickly. And if that's a little too much, I'm thinking I can go to uh, edit fade and maybe reduce a little a little bit of that amount. Well, I think I made two strokes, so that might not work. Um, but let's go in with a, a smaller chalk. That one's real fat chalk, so let me go and find um, another a, a blunt hard pastel, that's also kind of big, but I can just change the size of that on the fly by doing something like that. I was just holding down my option command uh, or uh, uh, command control. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm so used to the uh, Mac commands, I might make some mistakes by telling you the wrong things if you're on the PC. Well, that's giving him a nice rugged look. Um, and I wanna go and give him a little bit of a, um, of a greenish eye. I think he's got hazel or green eyes. So let me choose a green here. 
that doesn't happen to be in my um, uh, color set, but I quite like it. So I'm going to add it to my color set by doing that. There it is, lovely green. So just with the with the chunky uh, oil, let's go give them some green eyes. That's working nicely. And I'm thinking, let me just zoom out, see what I'm all about here. There's a few things I'd like to clean up. Maybe on the line layer, that's just a little bit uh, too strong a, uh, a section there. Maybe over here also, just kind of clean that up a little bit. I can do that on the line layer without affecting the color layer. Obviously, that's the purpose of, uh, of layers. If I go back to color, I'm still with white. I can clean up that uh, part of Hoda. the situation. Yeah, talk to me. So this is the perfect time to ask you because awesome. while you notice that you're painting with white rather than using an eraser, is there any yeah. oh, behind sure. that? Yeah, uh, going going all the way to the erase to the uh, to the toolbox to get the eraser would take too long. Um, okay. I could have an eraser as part of my custom palette, but it's so much easier with my left hand doing nothing but, you know, lying there uh, to go and, and choose the, uh, uh, the, um, the, the dropper tool in order to switch colors. That's, that's an extremely handy little technique for switching colors is, uh, and you might as well use white as an eraser. Uh, so that's the answer to that question. Okay, and then Sumaya is wondering, I mean, we noticed already the benefit to having your line and your color on separate layers, but is yeah. there any reason why you don't separate the various color elements on their own layers as well? Uh, there is no reason for this purpose uh, uh, for me to do that because, uh, uh, you know, again, I'm, want to, I'm wanting this to be, uh, a very speedy operation, and uh, all I need is, um, you know, a, a, a colorful image to print and then hand to the person within five right. minutes or so. Um, I, so there's no need for it for this for this uh, uh, purpose. And uh, you know, again, keep it simple. I would probably uh, want to do just a little bit more cleanup here. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Sometimes I'll just throw in a, a quick um, color background. So I, I, I'm choosing this uh, magenta color for that. And back to my dry ink, because I quite like uh, how juicy it is. And oh, I want to go back to the color layer. And so now I'm just going to do a quick, uh, a very, very rough looking, rough edged. And uh, I like I like rough and 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 uh, 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 dirty and well not dirty but uh, well quick quick so uh, that's uh, and and I also like the style that um, differs from what I would be doing if I was working with traditional tools uh, I like that there is an, a digital quality to this uh, I like that I'm um, I'm creating some effects that I can't do with uh, pen and, and paper. I also am noticing I, I, I covered his lips with his five o'clock shadow. I don't want to do that. So I want to go back to the color layer, get that pink, use maybe my scratch board tool because it's uh, thinner and I can control it better. Now I've got the lips back. He's got a thinner upper lip uh, and then maybe just a little bit uh, of the um, the grainy water to blend some of the edges on these on these color patches, and then I'll uh, maybe a little little bit of, of blending on some of that five o'clock shadow as well. And I think I'm going to call it. So I, do, I wasn't using an iterative save out of my um, forgetting to do that, and also out of my habit of just kind of moving forward and sort of trusting that that I won't mess up. Uh, <laughs> but that, that has, looks awesome. We, everybody loves it. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. Nice to hear. Joseph, and I I missed this, but what brush did you use for the face color? Yeah. Probably. Um, I think I stuck with the dry ink because I could cover a lot of territory with that. And I'm going to make the line disappear just so you can see the color only now. And so you can see, uh, let me zoom zoom in here, and you can see, you know, just from this this very telltale edge, uh, yeah. of the uh the, of the dry 
ink that that's you know this is this is the footprint of the uh, let me go back to dry ink uh look at uh, uh, and this is my my choice is to see the the cursor as a an image of the footprint of that particular brush uh there are other things you can choose in preferences uh but i just like to see that and it reminds me of the tool i'm working with I, if i'm working with the um with the uh the, this this here then is is the chunky oil pastel and that looks like the tip of that tool so that makes it feel ever so much more organic uh, to me i'll just make that okay back. thanks rhoda sure sure i better save that as david david <laughs> Ooh, almost had it david david well shall we do another we have time for another one sure we'd love All that right. So then I'll dismiss David. I'll go, I will trash David from the, uh, uh, pardon me, David, uh, for being so rude. I will uh, clear the current reference image. Incidentally, you can make this larger or smaller, uh, wider or narrower. And I'll open up the Nicole image. Thank you for submitting your beautiful photo. This is a, a glamour shot, I would call it. And so if I open, once again, open my template, uh, I can go to File, Recent, and I can say Template. Let's go to Template, and now uh, I'll just move that over so it's covering up all my desktop there, and I'll I'll make it go to Zoom to Fit. And let's go now to the line layer using black and using the dry ink. Now, this is a very different kind of uh, a face. I want to just... Whoo, I want to get the edge of the hair. I want to kind of frame her face with this hair. Uh, she has a, a wonderful, glamorous eyes here. I want to get that glamour there. I want to maybe zoom in a little bit and uh, put in some very, she's got some very dark eyes, so I'll kind of darken that in. But I left a little bit of a shine there for the uh, reflection in her eyes. I've got another eye to go here. Let's put that one in. And then I'm going to move, I'm going to zoom out and then put in the nose. The, the thing about the nose that uh, I think is distinctive is just that the the edge, the bottom edge of the nose. She's got these beautiful, full, voluptuous lips. I'm going to make the most of the lips. And she's got a beautiful, smooth face. I see the bottom of her face, the cheeks and the jaw as fuller than the top of her head so i'm going to exaggerate that uh i'm going to leave out the hand but i'm not happy actually with the uh with that jaw shape i think i'm going to try to do that whoa <laughs> it's easy to make that uh that dry ink uh, go a little too thick so that's going to do it i think and um i'm just going to create sort of an edge there uh, I'm, I'm i'm sort of making it up it looks like she has a scarf but that's uh that's going to do it let me add more to the hair at this point and i might just be making up some more curls than i see there and so i think i'm just about ready for the uh for the color layer but nah, i'm not happy with this eye so switching once again to white and just going in there and using the uh, dry ink as an eraser. I'm going to go back and put in a different eye. Maybe have that eye be a little bit closer. And and now I think let's try that again. And uh, well, I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. Let's try one more time. One more time again with the with the dry ink. Close enough. I'm going to end up, I know, in advance with some glamour eyelashes. Uh, and uh, actually, why don't I do it now? I'm going to zoom way in. <laughs> Since that's something to, that I put on my line layer, I'm going to use the rake tool. This time, I don't need variation. In fact, I'll use black. Look at how I, I, I use the rake tool to make eyelashes. I quite like that. So, And I don't know. I, I don't necessarily see eyelashes on her. I don't know what happened here, but whoop. Let me um, let me undo this. Let me just kind of get rid of that little that little area there. Looks like a problem. And so now I'm going to zoom out once again, and I'm going to give her a skin tone on the color layer. Now was that? Yeah. Okay. All of that was on the line layer. I just wanted to check. Let's give her a skin tone 
and maybe that'll work with uh, with the dry ink once again, just so I can cover a lot of ground. Um, did you notice that there was a little um, uh, that beach ball thing that there that that it took some time? It took a second or two for me to go from the the rake tool or whatever I was using before to the the dry ink, and I'll tell you why that is. That's because I was not able to find dry ink in in the 2020 brushes. Maybe it's there now that I learned how to how to do a search once again. But f failing that, I found my dry ink, which has always been my favorite brush for line work since uh, way back. I found it in the 2015 brushes library. Now. Painter needs a, a second or two to switch from the current library to that old library, and that's why you saw that little uh, that little beach ball. So that's uh, something um, I wanted to I'm share. I'm glad you brought yeah. that up, Rhoda, because Good. you know, version over version, we have tried to streamline the libraries, but we never take away any brushes. So any brushes from the beginning of time are accessible from that library menu. So if you have a favorite, yeah. you can actually move it over into 2020 if you want, or you can switch libraries like you showed. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a good thing to bring up. And Nicole is wondering if the drawing's going to be sent to her. She's well, super I think excited. that can be arranged as long as you give me full credit. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm here's, sure she here's an example where. I would want to use that variable rake in order to get the uh, a very quick uh, variation in color of the hair. But I'm going to, you know, do without that uh, and maybe just go to a slightly darker um, uh, red here and just add add in with 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 some uh, with some dry ink strokes uh, just to get some of that uh, to happen. I am going to clean uh, the whites of her eyes. I'll uh, this time I'll actually go to white and use the um use the uh okay the chunky oil see you know i'm gonna have to move that uh that dry ink into the 2020 library because you know even those two seconds i had to wait were you know like making me crazy <laughs> uh gotta have it and gotta have it now so let's let's give her i'm gonna zoom in again let's zoom in give her some beautiful brown eyes and just leave a little bit of space there I think maybe I'll give her also, well, I've got to give her some beautiful lips there. So let me get uh, that uh, to happen with my, oh, that could be just the color for the lipstick. And I'll go in there and I'll develop uh, this this gal. And, I, you know, uh, I think, oh, I'm still using that um, that fine dots texture. I don't want that. I want to switch to the, uh, the uh, uh, basic paper texture. That's much better. And now maybe I'll use a little uh, lighter pink. Oh, to put in that highlight that uh, for the lower lip. Oh, I'm liking that. And a little darker for it. Now, because I want to find something darker than this and it's not in my color um, uh, set, I'll go here and I'll just move this little point to something darker on the on that uh, color um, saturation and, and value uh, triangle. So that's what I'm going to do for the 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 part of the of the upper lip that is in in shadow a little bit more. There's a little bit of that that can be done over here as well. Now I'm I'm pretty happy with the way the lips look. Let me zoom out and let me do a save as in actually let me first do a save as uh, for Nicole. Now I can do more iterative saves um, if I if I need to do that uh, as I move along. So I'm going to just do a little smeary thing here to 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 uh, whoop, at, uh, needed to wait for my my grainy water to come up. So that's going to be just a way to get that uh, edge a little smoother. Uh, I think I need to make those eyes, uh, the, um, the, the iris of the eye, I think I need to expand. I'm going to zoom in for that. And so that's happening, I think, a little bit more effectively let me zoom out once again and give her some uh, she's got a beautiful um um blusher on so i want to go and get get some of that in there and give her a little bit of uh that that cheek and over here i know i'm going to be using my 
my blender in a second. So let me go back to the blender. And I have already forgotten what the last brush was, so I'm just going to choose the blender from the uh, custom palette. So here we are, blending, blending. That's so important with makeup. Sometimes I think I should have been a cosmetologist instead of an artist. But uh, this is, I think, Nicole Spens, or at least she is, uh, has a very good attention to how her face looks and makeup and whatnot. And so I want to do her justice if I can. I think I would like to also give her, and I can zoom in here on the reference photo to look at her eyes more closely. Yes, indeed. I want to give her some eyeshadow, and I think I want to use a, a kind of a purple for that. So let me go and do that with the chunky oil pastel. Oh, yeah. That's looking good. And a little bit of, of blending. I think we're getting close uh, now. Well, yeah, we are. Oops. And so I have the, no, I haven't switched. Yeah, let me let me go back to the last thing I used, which was grainy water, just like, just as I hoped. Okay, so a little grainy water. And now I'll do an iterative save. And just one more thing. I'm going to pick a color from my um, uh, image uh, rather than try to find it somewhere else and, and use the chunky pastel to just give her a little bit of, of tone on the tip of her nose and uh, go back to uh, uh, grainy water and blend that just a little bit and iterative save. And I think that's it. Okay, you guys? That is beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Oh, one oh. more. No, no, one more thing. I got to look at, look at the highlight on her nose. And there's a few little highlights there. It just <laughs> uh, So I want to do that with, with Chunky Oil Pastel. I just want to, I'll, I'll zoom in, get in there. A little, little bit of a very, very light touch for that. Oop, that was not light enough. So a little, kind of a light light touch for that. And then a little bit of, you see, well, one thing you need to do, I'm gonna switch back to the blender once again with my last used uh, item and then just kind of uh, blend that out. Um, one of the things you have to discipline yourself with, and this is a very general comment, whether you're working digitally or not, you have to know when to quit. You have to know when you're done. <laughs> and that last little bit, satisfied uh, satisfied me so here we are that I think that's the best caricature I've ever seen I do oh. love it and wow. Nicole is very happy um, <laughs> I know we're at the top of the hour here two very quick questions sure, um, why do you not sample from the photo uh, well that's interesting I could do I could I think let me see if if I can actually well gosh uh, as a reference for oh oh yeah well right here there's this little little uh, um, uh, eyedropper so yeah so I could sample from the photo Look, w watch what happens down here as I go to different uh, tones there and uh, indeed if I worked with photorealism more I would do more of that as it is yeah but you um, know what I don't need to yeah. because you you know how to select colors and but I mean just for those that may be challenged with color you can do that if you want to and guess what um, we well attendees figured out and we can talk about this after but for your variable rake tool the variability um, yeah it was set to audio input Oh my God! You can change that input, but just so everybody knows, uh. um, yeah. So with that, I think you did a fantastic job, Rhoda. Well, thank you so much, Tanya, and thank you everyone for for attending and for your kind attention. <laughs>